So there's ineffective erythropoiesis, there's an increase in serum and tissue iron, and the presence of ringed sideroblasts on the bone marrow. Hi, so today's video is going to be focusing on sideroblastic anemia. This is going to be the third anemia I'll discuss in this series and the final one. Um, there are two previous ones such as the IDA, iron deficiency anemia, and anemia of chronic disease. And then I'm going to make a fourth video summarizing and differentiating these three hypochromic anemias. But for now, for this video, we're going to be focusing on sideroblastic anemia. Lastly, we're going to talk about sideroblastic anemia. Sideroblastic anemia is actually a group of anemias. It's not just one, it's a group. So it's a group of, hypo it's a group of hypochromic anemias. So there's ineffective erythropoiesis, there's an increase in serum and tissue iron, and the presence of ringed sideroblasts on the bone marrow. So it can be inherited or acquired. So it could be a sex-linked congenital sideroblastic anemia or an autosomal recessive sideroblastic anemia or an acquired sideroblastic anemia, which can be primary, which is idiopathic, we don't know what the cause is, or secondary as a result of a drug, such as chloramphenicol. So please review my video on hemoglobin synthesis because I do cover how hemoglobin is made and if you have if you don't have a strong foundation on that, then you might get confused about the things that I'm talking about right now. So yeah, check that out. Uh, but if you do have good foundation, then let's move on. So there's an abnormality on the enzymes that do heme synthesis and the end product would be the ringed sideroblast. So basically what happens is there is a defect, molecular defect on the amino, 5 amino levolunic synthetase that help in making hemoglobin. So heme synthesis is impaired because it won't be able to make the protoporphyrin ring. So as you can imagine, when the iron enters the RBC, and, but there's no protoporphyrin ring because the protoporphyrin ring synthesis is impaired, that is when the problem happens. So iron just keeps going into the RBC and iron accumulates and therefore you get the ringed sideroblast look because iron just accumulates on the mitochondria. So these siderotic granules can be stained through Prussian blue and um, will look like blue dots on the RBC. So that's what happens during sideroblastic anemia. Um, another common cause for sideroblastic anemia is lead poisoning. Lead poisoning actually impairs heme synthesis in multiple steps. So it impairs the 5 amino acid dehydrase and ferro ferrochelatase. That's what lead poisoning interferes with and that's why heme synthesis is impaired during lead poisoning and so you get coarse basophilic stippling and basophilic stippling is when you have an RBC and it has blue dots all over it that's what happens because heme again heme synthesis is impaired so there's just an accumulation of iron going into the RBC and so basophilic coarse basophilic stippling is one of the common features of lead poisoning that's also a good thing to remember because this one always pops up on exams. Now let's move on to lab findings. When you see the peripheral blood smear of sideroblastic anemia, there is microcytes and normocytic RBCs. So there's a dimorphic population of RBCs when you look at the blood smear. The MCV, MCH, and MCHC are normal. RDW is increased, so greater than 14.5. So there's anisocytosis, there can be poikilocytosis, target cells, and Pappenheimer bodies. You get Pappenheimer bodies because there are iron deposits in the RBCs. And also you get basophilic stippling as mentioned earlier. Iron studies. So serum iron is up, ferritin is up, normal to decreased TIBC. Person saturation, person saturation is up, transferrin receptor is also normal to decreased. 
same as the TIBC. So for treatment, you just have to identify first if it's an acquired or hereditary um, sideroblastic anemia. If it's secondary, then you just remove the offending drug. If it's chloramphenicol, then you just stop the dosage for the patient and I think clears up pretty fast. And that's pretty much it for sideroblastic anemia. Hi, are you still there? <laughs> Thank you for your time and I hope I helped you understand these anemias better and easier. And if you think I have helped you, please do like and subscribe so I can keep this going, you know? And so that's it. Thank you so much. And I hope you, you know, pass whatever exam you're preparing for and please stay safe. These are strange and trying times and I hope you have a good rest of the day. So thank you for spending your time with me today and good luck with everything.